I did a quest tracker thing for Skyrim. And basically, I just listed out a whole bunch of uh, quests. Like, let me give you an example. So I have this one. I used a template to actually show everything. I, I just made it so that you can use the buttons to navigate between it. You can also mark things off as complete using that. Are you in zoom in view? I am not. Story view? Okay, so you're opening a bunch of tiddlers. That's fine, yeah. Yeah, all the other tiddlers are open. Okay, got it. I was thinking I was probably going to put it into story view, but I forgot to for this, but that's probably how I was going to leave it. So, am I the only one who has no idea what this is about? Hold on, I'm guessing it's like, uh, is it just like a, does it give tips or a complete walkthrough or like all the key elements? Yeah, so like it was, it would eventually have all the key elements right now. It just has the quest giver location and like the order. You can mark it off as complete, but eventually it would have all that stuff. That was just a little bit much to put it for all these classes. What's the checkbox that you're just showing us? So that marks it off as complete. So you can like search by uh, the things that you have completed. Or are you can oh. anybody else use checkbox? Check anybody do checkbox? Yeah. Um, so can you, so can you explain for everybody but Andrew who does checkboxes like what it is? Maybe show us the code for that checkbox. I'll show the code. Looks like you're just adding and de-adding tag, which looks really useful, at least for this. Uh, so this is my code for the checkbox. It's actually really simple. And yeah, it is just basically adding and taking off a tag. It's a, um, yeah, just highlight that checkbox and zoom in because there's no way anybody can see it. That's the code for it? Yeah, that, just that line, right. And I'll zoom in about 50 times. Control plus, right? There it is. Okay. So checkbox is actually a um, tiddly wiki widget. So like dollar sign list is a widget, dollar sign transclude is a widget, dollar sign checkbox is a widget. And it just says, okay, so create a tag called complete, put the text complete question mark and close the checkbox. And now you can, let's zoom out and show us the checkbox. You can close it and show us what it actually looks like in real life on a tiddler. And zoom in on that. Yeah. And so it creates that little box and tags things. Where else do you see this functionality? Just keep clicking tag, you know, complete tagging. Up. Where else do you see this functionality in TiddlyWiki? See that little box at the left of home in the toolbar? Click that. And what's it do? Puts the thing. How does it do that? It's setting a tag somewhere. Basically, it's setting a tag called home button visible on the toolbar. And when you check the box, it says yes. And then to decide which buttons to present there, it does a list to find all of the tiddlers that are tagged with home button visible. And if it finds them, then put the image in there. And so like where James changed the underlying code for dollar sign colon core slash UI slash button slash close, that thing was tagged either visible or invisible. And so what's interesting about TiddlyWiki is that dollar sign checkbox is available to you, ordinary users, and it's the same thing that the whole program is written in. Whereas like, think about Microsoft Word. How does Microsoft Word decide which buttons or features to make visible on the menus? Okay, oh, similar wow. logic, but can you as a writer use that functionality while you're writing your Word document? Like that doesn't even make sense to you, but it does in TiddlyWiki because you just use the, all the functionality. So you're basically like a, you're a writer, but you're also like a programmer, right? And that's what's distinctive, I think, about TiddlyWiki is it puts all that stuff, and you can just search for it. You know, and the more you search, like, all right, so linger over that home button, Brian. Um, so if you search for the text, open the default tiddlers, 
eventually it will take you to the tiddler button that has home and you'd say, and that's how you learn about how it works. And you'd eventually figure that out. So, you know, anyway, so that's kind of cool. That, that little checkbox thing. You think, oh, that's a cool feature, but everything that you see, every dollar sign list, dollar sign transclude, it's all written in the back end code, which isn't really back end. You're like right in the back end when you're writing. So I don't know if I explained that very well, but that's kind of cool. So did you do, um, you did templates, you did lists, you did, you use tags, yeah. um, and you do, what is that? What else does he do? And you transclude stuff. Yeah. What do you transclude? Um, I can show the Excel sheet that I made with all the, my information. And Your spreadsheet? Yeah. The spreadsheet I made with everything in it. Okay. And did you, um, so what's that? Can you expand for column E, make it wider? Okay. Yeah. So do you use location? I have location on there actually. And how does that come in? So in the future, I would have liked it to, so I could, you can see I have it on here. I was hoping to just like, do a list field. Can we see the, the, can we see the, um, it's that multi-line field that I was curious about. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have it separate, right? As you can see from right here. So let's just look at one of those tiddlers. That should really be separate. Yeah, just look, go up to the one above it and let's just look at the code for that the message to white run. And location comes into solitude white run, and that you're reading in from a. So what's interesting here is that Ryan's bringing in values of fields that then have meaning and value in TiddlyWiki because it's written in camel case. So it creates it as a link directly from his spreadsheet. You can also, I've done stuff, you can, you, you can put TiddlyWiki code in your spreadsheet. If you want values to come in as a transclusion, you can put the transcluded value of a tiddler in, and you can write code in Excel or Google Sheets to concatenate different values. So you can go get the name of a column couple over to the left and put braces in front and at the end of it. Or you can do that in TiddlyWiki. And so there's different reasons and times that you might want to do one versus the other. And so what we're seeing here is that Ryan's negotiating a relationship, just like James was negotiating relationship. And I think Derek and a bunch of others manage some of their data in spreadsheets. Some of it gets in TiddlyWiki. You know, um, what are some of the challenges that you guys have faced as you're doing that spreadsheet Tiddlywiki relationship. What's what are the challenges? Yeah. So if you need to update it, it will be a real hassle. Why? I think what I heard you say is that after you re-import from a spreadsheet, you have some hand work to do in your tiddlers. Because when you re-import from a spreadsheet, it overwrites your tiddlers. Okay. You have to figure that out. Because otherwise life sucks. So how do you fix so what kind of things do you do to manually update your tiddlers? But what is it that you do? Are you adding tags? Are you adding fields? Are you? I know for mine, when I update it, I use the entire order, the like this list field, and I have, like reset all of the. So like I had these in order, but because I imported it again today. Okay. So why? Okay. Yeah. So what? So that's one thing. So something's changing in Ryan's world when he imports. What's changing? the value of the field created or modified. And if you default sort and you don't. 
and you don't specify your sort, it's going to sort on modified or created, and you just imported them. What order do they get imported? The order of your spreadsheet. Actually, I don't believe that some of mine are in spreadsheet. I think it's kind of like... They're not random. There's no randomness in TiddlyWiki. Yeah, I was about to say. It, I think it it, be so the default here. sort may be by title of Tiddler. So, so the way to combat that kind of issue is you create another column in your spreadsheet that maintains a field for the order number that you want. What's kind of annoying about TiddlyWiki, it's, it's getting things in a sequential order is challenging because just remember, nothing is random. Everything is sorted. There's always a sort unless you specify random. So um, the other thing that I, a trick that I learned is that um, like say that Ryan wanted to have um, some, some aspects of Imperial Legend, Legion as a tiddler that he wants to maintain in TiddlyWiki. He doesn't want to bring it in from a spreadsheet. So he could, in, he could create a tiddler called Imperial Legend Comments or Imperial Legend Add-ons, maintain stuff in TiddlyWiki and build a link, an association to that other tiddler. And that way you're maintaining two different data stores. So, but you have to decide if you want your raw data to be in Excel, then you want everything in there as much as you can, or everything actually. Yeah, and Marguerite, you, everything should be in your spreadsheets. Nothing should be, um, so yeah, cool, thank you. Who's 11?